So during this exercise, uh, we'll follow the tutorial regarding to the them with corn future in a valley. Uh, this tutorial is available under the help menu in Plexis LE Designer. So under help, you can select the tutorial menus. And then you'll be able to see here an option called tutorial menus. If we expand tutorial menus, you see that we have several tutorials available for different modules of Plexis LE. And for this specific one, we are picking the Plexus Designer, of course, and the tailings them with Core and Filter. So if we, if we click on the model setup, all these steps uh, in order to build this model are available here for you, and you can follow uh, these steps as well. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to come here under Models, Create New Models. Uh, I need to save my model under a certain uh, project uh, folder. I'm selecting here All Projects. And then, uh, depending on the, the, the project you select, it will be linked to a certain uh, project folder path. Okay. I have more than one, I could select. Uh, here I have the module, so Plexus Designer. I'm using the metric units, but I could also build my model using Perio units. And I'm gonna, going to call it Tailings Core Future Demo. Click OK, and then our model will open. So we already saw a bit on the Plexus Designer interface. Uh, to get started with this model, we'll have uh, as an initial input uh, the foundation surface of our model. Okay, so this foundation uh, it will, be, will bring the foundation as a mesh object, and to do so, we need uh, to use the options available on the, the import menu that we have here. So I can come here under import and select directly the mesh option. I will I will then uh, find my Plexis LE folder. And I know that this mesh is a CSV file. So just expand here and select the option called uh, referring to the CSV file. Let me see. Here, comma, separated value. Uh, the name of the file is Plexus Designer Tutorial Tailing Score Future Foundation Data. Double click. I'd like to copy. Yes to, to all. Uh, when we import a CSV file, we have this uh, dialog referring to the file data preview. So imagine that uh, if it's a mesh, we need uh, the nodes, nodes coordinate uh, related to each, uh, node, each node of the mesh. So in that sense, we can make sure that uh, the software is mapping uh, correctly the position of X, Y, and Z in the file. Okay, so I'll just keep as it is because it's correct. And here is the uh, mesh imported for us. Okay, when we import a mesh or we import any file, it will come under the imported data folder. You can see that uh, the, the data is blocked, so I cannot uh, perform uh, that many adjustments or changes in this mesh because it's blocked. Uh, what what I what I can do is actually uh, come here under Actions and click on Make Editable. When I click on Make Editable, I'm saying that now I can uh, edit and make changes related to this 
mesh if I want. Okay, I'll just left click here, rename the, the mesh, I'll call it foundation surface, click OK. And uh, we're now uh, we need to define uh, the dam surface. We need to create the surface related to the dam in this model. Uh, we don't have any surface uh, external reference on the uh, geometry of the dam. Uh, what we will do in this case is use the tool called Road Builder. So basically, we will create a cross section here and extrude uh, a certain cross-section along a polyline that will pos be positioned as the, as, the, uh, as the length of the dam and it will fit into the model as a surface. We can now come here then under new cross-section because we need to create the, 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 the extrude in order to create a certain extrusion, we need to define the, the cross section of this extrusion. Uh, we are picking the option road. There are others. Uh, and then I, I already know, for example, the, the shape related to my, my, the cross section of my dam. Okay. So I'm just including here the, the angles and height. You can see here. Uh, all the, how these parameters uh, are referring to the cross section, okay? And we see these uh, this red point here. Uh, actually, this is the point that w that the extrusion will happen. The, the the reference point. Okay, I created. I can close it. It will keep the the information related to the the cross section. And now I'm going to create also a polyline. Okay, so we can come here under new polyline. Uh, this polyline, I can uh, define a certain coordinate. I could also draw the coordinate, draw the polyline if I want. Uh, I have the coordinates related to this tutorial. I just copy and paste from the tutorial using the keyboard, but I could also use here the options available. I'll close and you see that now for each type of entity, I have a certain information included. So I have an, a polyline, as you can see, located here in this region of the, the model. The cross section, we cannot see the cross section yet because first we need to extrude it to, to see no, the, the cross section shape and the foundation surface, which is under mesh folder. Okay, so the next step uh, will come here under tools and use the option called Road Builder. So we need an extrusion path, which is the, the polyline, and a cross section, which is this cross section we created. Uh, we could uh, already build uh, this new surfaces, this new surface into the existing one. Uh, we will not do this right now because I want to show you some some additional features available in the software. Okay. Uh, when we click OK, uh, we can see that now the, the, the cross section with the shape defined previously uh, is properly extruded in the model. Okay. Um, just as we were expecting, uh, we also have a, a region that is limiting the extension of this extrusion that can be used later if you want. Uh, and the idea here is that this new mesh that we have, I'm just going to rename it to make ten things uh, easily. Okay, so just uh, keep it cross section, then from polyline, then because we are we need to use the road builder also. Uh, for creating the core and the filter. Okay, so now we are going to create the core. Uh, I'm just going to rename this cross section to them. Otherwise, we'll, we can make mistakes here. Um, come here under new cross section. 
this new cross section then is related to the core and I also have here the dimensions of the core I'll just keep this as it is click and I'll just rename here core to use as a reference uh, I'm, I'm also going to create a new polyline because uh, the core is there's a, a small offset from the the polyline of the dam okay uh, we could also um, take the polyline okay and uh, this polyline that we are using as reference and uh, translate and then okay uh, use it as the uh, the extrusion reference for the cross section of the core but in this case I'm just going to create a new point line to, and then uh, also include here the coordinates of my core point line okay I'll just rename here as well and we can see that uh, this new point line is included in the model uh, and then I will come here under Tools, Road Builder, and do the same thing, but now for the core like, structure. Okay, we can see that the core was created along with the region. Uh, we can see here also the name. Um, And I'll just deselect these regions. I don't. I'm enabling the regions because I don't want to see them in the model. They are, let's say, not important for my building process. These regions that were uh, automatically generated. And then I will finally create the cross section related to the filter. Okay. For the filter, we are not going to use the road, but the closed uh, road actually. And we'll see why uh, when we, we get the final extrusion, because it will influence uh, in the shape of the the final mesh that differs from how the the core and the dam look like. Uh, additionally, we are going to also create a new polyline here. So new polyline. I'm going to paste the coordinates. You can see that. Uh, the direction of the polyline is, is different from the, the other entities. I'm just going to call it polyline filter. Okay. And let me deselect these two, at least so you can have a, a good look on how the process will look like. Also going to call here filter. Come here under tools, road builder. And then finally extrude the polyline using the cross section of the filter. I'll click OK. And here is the final shape of this filter. Okay, so as expected, we are using a closed road. So you can see that um, uh, the corners are, are, are connected here. Uh, different from what we see when using just uh, the road extrusion. Okay. Also, I'm, don't, I'm not interested in this uh, region obtained from the design. Okay. And uh, let's now use some of the intersecting tools available in Plexus Designer. Okay. Oh, this select the point lines. Uh, we will understand uh, later. A bit more on the intersecting tools detail by step by step but uh, let's see some of them in action okay we already um, know the concept related to the layered cake approach which is this case here basically be between two surfaces uh, we have one material applied uh, and for doing this we need to adjust the extension and connection of these meshes with the foundation surface which which is the the surface that we have uh, as a reference okay uh, before we proceed with any intersecting we can see that for example the mesh of the dam which is the green one uh, has less nodding points 
and actually the nodes of the mesh are not intersecting the dam itself and this can cause uh, at a certain point of the intersecting and uh, fixes related to the process in some um, some undesirable um, results. So before we proceed with any approach here, I'm going to select all the meshes, right click, actions, come here under surface inter intersection and click on fix intersecting geometries. By doing this, I think you already noticed the changes. Uh, all the intersecting parts of all meshes, uh, especially with the foundation, will have a, a connecting point, which will be a node between the, the, the intersecting part that we didn't have before. So this process is useful, uh, especially when we proceed later with uh, remeshing or further intersecting process. Okay. Uh, that's it. We have now the new surface that were that now referred to fixed because we use the uh, fixed intersecting geometry. And uh, let's then proceed with the use of uh, uh, a, a tool um, uh, called merge into a new surface. Okay. So I'll just position here my model like that and the next step that we need to do will start uh, the intersectings from the bottom to the top so the first intersect that I will do is related to creating the future material here uh, for doing this I'm going to select the surface the foundation surface and the future okay and if I change here to Okay, so if I change here to the YZ view, you can see that an intersection between the foundation surface and the filter will result in this volume here. Okay, uh, so let's select the two of them. I'm keeping the, the 2D view so you can see the differences. I'm going to select action. The actions are related to the, this two selected surface. Come here under surface intersection and merge into a new surface. Okay. When I do this, I have to select, well, uh, I want to keep the upper elevations. Okay. Um, and also, this is the, the order that we will consider foundation and the cross section. Click OK, and it results in this new merged surface. So basically, this merged surface here is merged surface filter. And we change here to the, to the 3D view. We can see that right now we have this portion that was not included in the foundation surface. Okay, so now we have the volume related to the filter part. Okay, uh, the next step here is uh, intersecting the core. So we're coming bottom to the top. We have here the this core, and we are going to intersect not with the foundation surface, but actually with the merged filter, because then we will create this zone here, bottom to the top, as I mentioned. So for this action, I'm going to select the two of them, actions, and use the same tool, merge into a new surface keeping the upper elevations because I want to include the, this upper part here. Uh, I'll click OK. And then I have created this merge surface related to the core influence, as we can see. OK. Uh, I hope you are understanding the process here. Uh, and then the next step is 
correlating the dam, which is this, this volume that we are looking for, with the merged surface core. As you can imagine, we will come here under action, merge into a new surface, keeping the upper elevations, and we'll see that now we have this merged surface referring to the dam. Okay, so if I select all of them, including the foundation, and switch to the YZ view, here in the XZ view is not the ideal to see, but uh, now we can notice that, um, yeah, this portion, uh, yeah. So now we can see that we have the foundation, we have the filter, so volume, volume one. We have the core and the dam. So this is the process for building a layered cake model. Okay, so besides this, uh, imagine that uh, proceeding with uh, limit equilibrium or finite element modeling, we need to define the limits of the model as well. Uh, when we handle large models, large geometries, uh, we can also specify just some zones uh, to, let's say, proceed with the analysis portion. In this case here, uh, in order to create the, the model limits, one of the concepts related to Plexus Design or in Plexus LE is the use of regions, just the ones that were obtained from the output when um, creating the, using the road builder. In this case, I'm going to create a new region, so new region, and I'm just going to paste these coordinates here that are referring to the these limits that you can see here. There are, uh, you can see that the foundation surface is a bit uh, extended or out the, the the region limits, that's fine, it's not a problem. Uh, I could also take a certain surface if I wanted to extrude, extend here until the limits of the surface and come here under convert and convert to region. Then the software will take the limits of the surface as uh, the region. Okay, uh, as a next step, let me just call this region model extends. Okay, keep in mind uh, that it's important to name your surface correctly. Sometimes it's even better to uh, include a one, two, or three a number before the mesh so you can order them correctly for the layered cake approach. This is important. Uh, and to finish up our model, uh, there is just some things missing, which refers to the reservoir and uh, the, the river, uh, a certain river uh, elevation here in the uh, downstream portion of the dam. Uh, to do that, this uh, we have a tool that we'll learn a bit more later, which refers to the use of uh, the creation of a pond in the model. Well, uh, I will just select the merge surface then because it's the the upper one, right click, and I'm going to come here under actions, and there is an option called generate pond. Okay, so when I click on the generate pond, it says to me, well, you need to pick a coordinate and a certain elevation. I'm going to draw the elevation here under this upstream zone under a certain location and define that the elevation of the reservoir is 37. When I do this, the software will position a surface that respects this elevation 37 under the whole zone here, okay? Limited by the valley. Uh, I will call, you. Ha we have the pond boundary, okay? Because it, it generates an, a boundary as a region and the mesh. And that's it. Well, the next point is now the downstream part. So I'll take the merged surface again, come here under actions, 
generate bond, click on draw, I'll just position a certain point here, and I know that the elevation of the river is 10.2. I'll click OK, and then this surface will be generated for me. Just rename the mesh uh, as river. And we have here this pond boundary 2. I'll just rename it here to river boundary because we, we, we're going to use later this region. Well, uh, you can see, uh, and this is important, I want this region here because my intention is using this model in a finite element calculation. Okay, But you can see that the generated uh, surface of the river is, well, were, was created based on this extension of the dam surface. And consequently, we have this outer part of uh, this region that uh, is not the same of the model extends limits. Uh, what could we do to make this region match this one? Well, uh, we have uh, some options in the software under tools. Uh, we can come here under set operation and then uh, we can select uh, the subject list and the clip list. So the subject list is the river boundary that we have here. And what is the clipping surface or what is, sorry, what is the clipping region in the model? Well, the clipping is actually the model extends. Okay, uh, we can set the, the operation here uh, and we are going to set as intersection because I want to intersect one and the other. And then uh, we're going to click OK because we want to generate the region, keep as it is. And you see that an, an intersection was created which is now respecting the limits of the model extents. Okay, uh, I will just call it river boundary fixed. Okay, and now I, I have here set uh, the model. Well, uh, what is the next step? Okay, I'm not refining the mesh, anything. I'm just, going, I'm just going to create now the module volume, the final module volume to proceed with my finite element calculation later. How could I do this? Well, I have here, I need to select uh, the, the surface that I want to consider. Okay, the pond and the river were used to create this region boundary. And why is that? Because in the finite element analysis, I can say that this region has a certain head elevation or a, cer a certain uh, well surf surface here that uh, it's, it's actually an infiltration process, a rainfall event or so on. This is kind of the goal here for this region. Uh, and then we can come under new volume and define what we want to include in the model. Well, uh, I need, the, as I explained late, uh, before, uh, we need at least one region. In this model, we are going to include three regions because we have the region referring to the model extents, and this index is also import, uh, important because it's the, the order that they, they will follow in the output. Uh, the pond boundary and the river boundary fixed. Additionally, I'm going to include the surface as well. Uh, I have here, I will handle five surfaces in the model. The top one is the dam, followed by the core, then we have the filter. Finally, we have the foundation surface fixed. And we are going to include a constant a surface at the bottom to make our model uh, look um, uh, with a certain constant elevation on the bottom. Okay, 
uh, by doing this, I can come here and click OK. So the goal of the module volume, of course, is let me deselect the meshes and the surface. But the goal of the module volume is making sure that how we are we are setting up the layered cake is what we were expecting in terms of uh, uh, well materials in terms of volumes related to each material layer as well, and the volumes are subdivided based on the regions that we included. Uh, and also, the module volume can be used, here we have under action, to check for surface pinch-outs. Okay? Pinch-outs may lead to negative volumes, to problems in the finite element mesh, uh, to non-convergence of uh, slope stability analysis sometimes, depending on, 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 how, on how critical these pinch-outs are. So we can use this tool, and in this case we noticed there aren't pinch-outs. Uh, and we can also see in the YZ view and so on uh, how the model is actually, uh, how the, the materials are uh, defined here in the model. Okay. Uh, well, if we come under module volume and access the properties, we can see here uh, what are the surface, surface and regions included. We have this material dialog that can be used in the case that we want to define the material already in Plexus Designer. No, I'm not saying that here is the place we're going to create the, the strength properties or the, um, uh, the hydraulic uh, conductivity and so on, but at least you name these materials and when you proceed to Plexus LE, you don't need to uh, fill up the the material per lay to be already there for you. So you have this option as well. I'm not using this case. So we can take this module volume, come here under action, and generate a model. Okay. So I can decide. Well, I want to proceed with a groundwater because it's the module that I'm picking. Steady state, matrix day, and then. Uh, Say, well, with core and filter model. I'll click OK and then uh, the groundwater module, uh, so the analysis module will be included in Plexus Ali for us, as you can see, all the surface and regions that we used. And then we can proceed with the workflow for the groundwater analysis.